Okay, then. Guys, uh, it's two days in a row you've lost a game that uh, you had within the grasp. I know it's been a, a tough uh, start for the season for you guys. What do you take out of this game? Um, I think the biggest thing is it really just comes down to the last four minutes. Like you said, it was in our reach in the last four minutes. Or the last two minutes, we let it slip away. And um, um, both teams that we played, they got more experience, older older players, so they've been in those type of games. So it's only something that we can learn from. Uh, go back, watch film, and uh, something that we just look at here. And then it just only shows how much growth we have. Um, even though we went 0-2, I think we showed a lot of people that we can compete with with some of the top teams in the country. And um, we we'll only have like so much more to grow. And by the time we get near to ACC player end of the year, it, those things will be fixed. Scott, um, how much were you feeling at last night's game during the first half? Excuse just, me? Um, just like in terms of your, you know, just, just like um, being in shape, um, how much were you feeling at last night's game uh, during the first half today? Uh, yeah, no, I was definitely feeling a little bit, but um, our practices are on the same guard, so. Uh, KP, he's prepared us for these moments. How did you all flip the switch after that first half and have get going offensively? Uh, just talking at halftime, talking to each other, knowing what we got to do, what we got to execute. Thank you. Scott, what changed out there when Indiana went to the zone late in the second half? Uh, I think it just kind of threw us off. Uh, we started playing a little tentative, holding the ball, dribbling. Um, I, had, I had two bad turnovers uh, near, the, near the end of the second half, so that's something I got to go clean up. But I think the biggest thing was uh, really playing a little too tentative. Caleb, uh, Caleb, how much of a spark do you feel like Ty Lohr gave you guys out there? Uh, Ty Lohr gives us a spark every time he gets on the court. He always does the right thing. He's always looking for his teammates. Um, and he also can score. He's very fast. He's hard to stay in front of. So he gives us a good spark every time he steps on the floor. Anything else for the players? Yeah, Coach, uh, Make an opening and then we'll take questions. Um, first of all, got to take my head off to Indiana. Uh, Woody did a great job with his team. He had a good team. Uh, very solid, don't make many mistakes. Um, they didn't shoot the ball great, but they made adjustments. They picked up the adjustments quick and they caught us a little bit off guard. We became stagnant offensively. Um, hats off to them, they, the big fella. The two big guys really uh, did a good job for them. I don't know how many points in the paint they had, but it was a lot. Um, we are we're close. Um, we just got to get over the hump. Um, you know, just talking to uh, the owner of the Knicks and, and the president, and they both said, "Man, the two games that we watched you play, y'all play hard. Y'all are getting better. We see it." Well, I need that to translate to double. So I need I need this team to to understand that you know winning matters. Making winning plays every little thing through the course of a game it matters. Don't take moments for granted. Don't take seconds for granted. And then play winning basketball and let's play as hard as you can together and and see what the outcome is. Questions? I'm sorry, John. Hey Kenny, before the season you said it was really important to be competitive in this event given what happened last year. Now that you accomplished that, how disheartening is it to come so close to a win that would have changed the morale in your locker room? Great question. I mean, the guys are hurting, I'm hurting. Um, I said it from day one, we are a much better team. We've gotten better. We are competitive. Um, but man, if we tighten up a few things, where will we be sitting now? What if that shot yesterday doesn't go in? What would we be sitting here saying? What would we be sitting here saying if we finished out the game, we had them on their heels, they, the last three or four minutes, go to a zone, and then we, which we've been really good against the zone, we get past it. Now we extend out 40 feet from the basket instead of close to the three-point line and hold the ball and dribble the ball instead of zipping the ball around the court versus the zone and attacking gaps and getting the ball to the middle, which we practice every day. Um, again, we're close, um, but we got work to do. Kenny, how much do you just kind of have to live with the growing pains of having young guards like Tyler and Scott? Because I, I was thinking specifically about halftime. In the first half, you're telling them to hold one shot yesterday, too. 
and they kind of rush and make a play and it ends up? You know, that's a great question. You have to, you know, you don't want to take things away from them and make them passive. You want them to understand. The second, the, the great part for me is uh, both of them, the second they make the mistake, they understand and they say, I'm sorry, my bad. Um, but I need them to grow. And, and in this game, um, the best players, the best teams, they make adjustments quicker. I need Tyler to make adjustments quicker. Um, learn the game faster. Learn everything about this game, everything about what it takes to be great at this level now. The same for Scott. In a lot of respects, Sky still has freshman stuff there because he didn't play a full season last year. So he's learning as well. Yeah, Coach, uh, you mentioned they went zone there, and I think it was a 13-0 run that, that kind of decided the game. What was it about their zone that really impacted you guys? I just think it, it forced us out. Really, we stayed out too wide. We didn't move the ball the way that we've been doing. Um, and then we became passive. I mean, we telegraphed passes. Um, one time we looked at a guy for four seconds before we threw a lob, they got a steal. Um, one time we dribbled into it and they got a turnover. We got a turnover. Um, we drive in, we take a bad shot. Um, we didn't make the correct reads. Against the zone, look, you got to move the ball, you got to see where you're passing into, you got to look for gaps, and you attack. Ball movement attack, whether it's to the post or to the to the uh, from the perimeter, we didn't really do that. Um, we sort of got stagnant in the zone and it knocked us for a loop, and we didn't make the adjustment. Kenny, on the heels of two names that you had and you gave away, I'm wondering for you as a head coach, can you teach and coach? winning traits and a winning mentality to your players, or does that is that something in your experience that needs to be experienced and achieved materially on the floor by them more than anything that you can do this year with your staff and practice? Great, great question. So for me, when I look at your question, the first thing is how do you simulate game pressure? Because like when, before we played Texas, guys, we haven't played a team this athletic this fast that shoots the ball like this. So I need our practices to be ramped up even more than they have been. And I try to simulate that. Um, and that's probably the most that you can do because some of it they got to learn on the fly. And they got to get that experience to be able to be good at that experience when they're in it. Um, it's, it's a little bit of both, to be honest with you. And um, for me as well, you know, when you play teams that are high level teams, you know there's gonna be growing pains, you know there's gonna be moments where the momentum isn't your way. And I'm just saying fight through it, fight through it. Be cognizant of what's going on on the court. Be aware of everything on the court and learn from it. Willing learners. Kenny, you played back to back days, so there wasn't all the time obviously to prepare for Indiana, but then they throw a zone at you that Rich they've never shown all year. Uh, did that just sort of like shock you guys? And you guys even talk about a zone with them at all in your in the night? You know, we did it? not. I knew Woody wouldn't play zone, <laughs> or I thought he tricked me. Um, but to be honest with you, that would be the last thing I think we would have a problem with because we have been really, really good versus zone. Um, even in practices, when the ball, when we we really have a good feel for it, but in this game, um, we got tentative. We got tentative, we got stagnant. We processed the game instead of instinctively moving the ball. Um, we telegraphed passes. Um, we got to do a better job and look at the film. I got to do a better job of getting them to understand the importance of shifting the zone and then attacking. Nice question. Coach, at the end of the first half, you guys went to seven out of, I think, five or nine minutes without a field goal. What were they doing and what were you guys not doing? to uh, get on the board? Um, you know, for me, when I think about my team, you know, the one thing that's constant with us is that when we have success, the ball is moving and we're playing and we're attacking. When we have failures, so when you talk about lulls in the game, we settle for jump shots. And a lot of the jump shots are one pass and a shot or no pass and a shot. That's 
losing basketball and getting them to understand that we have to move the zone, we have to move the man, we got to move the ball around the court and we got to attack. We got to get paint touches. Paint touches, if we can get multiple paint touches, what we found is that we are really good to it. And that's when we shoot a bunch of free throws. Okay.